Oh, oh, TC. Hey, oh, that's, that's cool. cool. You got a podcast? Well, I didn't, I didn't know, know that. that. I didn't know that's that. cool. How you do? Welcome, welcome, welcome. We are back. OTC's very own podcast, Oh That's Cool, on all the amazing people we work with here at Ozarks Technical Community College. I am Jared Durden, and with me as always... Uh, I am Andrew Crocker, and I'm feeling this very special episode, but on top of that, it's Friday, and I feel very appreciated this week. How about and you? And it's the Friday before the last week of classes. That, it's a very special Friday. The specialist. Have you felt appreciated this week? I have. I had cake four days in a row. <laughs> where are you Actually, getting cake? five. Where are you getting cake from? Today. Uh, the Center for Academic Innovation. Yeah. The center, I mean, tell you what, I want to give a shout out to Gabriel Sands. I walk into the Information Commons every morning, and he's there behind the table all mo- all week. All week. And uh, he's, uh, uh, hey, hey, oh, we, got, uh, we got waffles, waffles in CAA. And I think to myself, waffles, you say? And so I stumble on in, have myself some waffles. I had strawberries, whipped I cream. I totally missed syrup. the waffles. You missed the waffle day. Although I think I may have had all the waffles. So gotcha. I, you may not have missed them. You may have just been slow on the uptake, and I've told them all before you could. I did catch nacho day. Nacho day, yes. yes and they actually brought in, they cooked their own beef. They had a crock pot going. So I was told it was because we're nacho average, average teachers. <laughs> yeah. Was there like a pun every day? Was there I, do, I don't know if there was anything on waffles. Uh, what did, how can you even pun waffling? Because you, you're kind of indecisive. That's a term, right? Yeah. You're indecisive. No. I, I, can't, I can't work that into something clever. That's all right. Uh, we, uh, it's actually uh, a little meaningful today as well because we have our first... We talked about this with Vicky in the picnic episode. We have ourselves a, um, what do you call it? Uh, we have the spring fling is tonight, which is the of, the completely ever. unofficial official dance. And as far as I know, is anybody, oh, we have other people in the room with us today. Has, has there ever been a dance at OTC before? I'm unfamiliar. I've seen people dancing. Right. But like at a designated spring event. picnic, but that doesn't really count. No. That's a multi fast. This well, one is all the direct decorations and balloons. It's pretty official. Yeah, in the in the atrium, and that's actually combo with the special arts. Are you making your way out to the arts later today? The arts exhibition. Absolutely. Yeah, I got a couple students that are six singing. And yep. Six to eight. Yeah, or the Oblisk. I th- a few of them were at the Oblisk as well. The very own Oblisk. Megaverse. Is that how you say it? Oblisk. Oblisk. It's got an e after the b. It should be Oblisk, but I'm being outvoted in the room. I, I thought it was. I swear, I thought it was an. Speaking of the room. Okay. Yeah. So we uh, normally have a guest, except yeah, for, do. of course, our, our, our special picnic episode. Uh-huh. Today, uh, we have uh, seven, will be eight guests. Uh, we have with us Rob McLaughlin, Jonathan Statz, Piper Wilson, Kaylin Martin, uh, Daniel Wise, and Robert Randolph. And we will be joined a little bit later by Blaine Rap- Radford. And you might ask, well, what do all these people have in common? Besides being uh, uh, employees we, at OTC, we robbed the casino together. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that's something we should do. Who would be yeah. each person uh, their specialty? Yeah, that's right. Uh, we ran uh, a tough mutter. So uh, say hello, everyone. Can we wa- hello. let's? Yeah, let's work our way <laughs> through. Let's go room. around the room and and go ahead and tell us who you are and and what you do here at the college. We'll start. Uh, we'll start over here. All right. My name is Rob. Uh, I'm a network engineer in the IT department here. Uh, and basically, I keep everybody online. Sounds great. You made your way all the way over from Graph. That's where you hang out, Graph? Mostly. Yeah, okay. Yeah. We got we like go everywhere. three or four buildings represented in this room today. Yeah, we do. We're everywhere. Yeah. Right on. Well, my name is Jonathan. Uh, I am the, let's see if I can get it right, assistant um, college director of project management. That's like so, six words in your it, title. It's actually, I had to spend time like memorizing it at home because it's like super long and like the title I had for like ten years was like project engineer. So yeah, it's kind of a kind of a difference for me. But so we got to shorten that down. Even what Secretary just, of Defense is sec down. What if you just say it as an acronym like Audicpim? Audicpim? Audicpim. I like it. I like it. That sounds good. Yeah. Yeah, I just manage construction projects here at the college. Uh, I spend most of my time over in the operations building, which is kind of nice because it's like off by itself so i'm kind of like away from the rest of the college crowd right are you are you are you hard hatting it over at our brand new I, building I am being hard-hatting built? It. Mm-hmm. even even when i'm not wearing a hard hat i've got a yeah. pretty hard head so <laughs> yeah, sure most of the time i'm hard we have actually evidence of that from the tough mutter exactly how hard your head is <laughs> yes yes i'm piper wilson i work with our dual enrollment programs here at otc welcome aboard 
I am Kaylin Martin, and I work in the um, Information Commons building, and I do pretty much everything that doesn't deal with students. That's right. And a veteran of the podcast. We brought and you a on for a good podcast. two and a half minutes to celebrate your rescuing of a tent at the picnic because <laughs> yes, it got blown right. up. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, anyways. And I'm Danielle Wise. I'm the odd man here. I have left OTC, but was the development director at the foundation, and now I'm at Foster Adopt Connect as of Monday. Don't ask me any questions. I'm still learning. Uh, can, can I ask you, how is it going? It's going really well. It, it Lots of great people, which is, there's great people everywhere, but I'm excited. Bring us home. Robert Randolph, I'm the executive director of the Robert W. Plaster Center for Advanced Manufacturing. So when Jonathan whines about his title being long, yeah. I win. <laughs> I didn't count the number of words that were in that one. But actually, your job description is just your name. I'm just Robert Randolph. That's my job here. Right. I'm just. Yeah, my job is just basically anything Plaster Manufacturing Center to uh, you know, work, working with the foundation, fundraising, uh, working with the technical education folks on curriculum and program lineups and things of that nature, working with Jonathan and Blaine with project management. So just kind of a unique mix of things. It's very important that we have everybody introduce themselves in their own voices because we've got to make sure that the listener can associate a name with the voice. So when somewhere around the way, voices. there's going to be a lot of voices. A few of you are going to admit to things that are unsavory here. We need to make sure that the <laughs> listeners know who to avoid. But it's, not, it's hard to discern sometimes, but then now that we have names that match the, the, the voices. Because that's our goal for, for the podcast. Yeah, so we got to expose. To, yes. we, what we do is we... Expose and ostracize. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, what we're doing is we're opening up a personality to the rest of campus. But the ostracization just naturally comes with it, right? Yeah. I hope not. <laughs> that, was, that was, of course, sarcasm. Yeah, of course. Uh, so... Uh, this is kind of a new format, so there might be a lot going on at once, but we'll try to kind of moderate and go through. And one of the first suggestions was we probably should first kind of explain what a Tough mutter is, right? It, did, is this, was this any, besides Andrew, was this any of your second time at a Tough mutter? No. I think I was the only yeah. one that's done it before, yeah. Okay. Yeah. First timers for the rest of us. <laughs> So let's start off with uh, how how you would describe the tough mutter. So you want to start us off, Rob? How would you describe what a tough? If someone hasn't done a tough mutter, what would you tell them it is? Oh, I suppose it would. I would describe it as uh, you know a five or ten k kind of obstacle course where uh, teamwork. Yeah, it's heavily encouraged. Uh, everybody kind of cheering each other on to help finish it. Not necessarily a race, uh, more just a really fun kind of competition against yourself. That was the goal, right? The goal is to finish, right? It's not yeah. necessarily to blast people. But we had uh, <laughs> Danielle had a timer running the whole time, but <laughs> she no, was racing, yeah. she was <laughs> racing. It's kind of I don't know, maybe something about the five k, and this will be different if we decide to do this again at a greater distance. Is that the crowds will spread out more, and you, there won't as me as much line waiting, which surprised me this time around. But uh, yeah, they, because that kind of ruins the timing of it too, right? An hour and 39 minutes. That's, we can do better next that's year. How, okay. <laughs> that's how long it took? Well, not if we do a different distance. It took us an hour and 39 minutes, though. Yeah, and you Boy, said you did the 15K in like right. 40 minutes. That's, that's right. not possible. I was shooting from the hip on that. I was I was not accurate. <laughs> so that was totally a guess. It was totally a guess. 45 minutes. I was like, oh, no, that's yeah, it didn't work at all. So, Jonathan, tell us something. Uh, what surprised you? What did you not expect about the Tough Mudder that you would you would maybe let someone know if they were doing it, hey, you better know this about it. Gosh. I mean, there were so many new things since it was my first time, but I, I would say most entering it, I figured I would be trying to tackle each obstacle independently. And so, you know, like you said, Rob, like you have to have teammates help you. You can't get through some of the obstacles by yourself. You cannot. You can't. Hmm. And so the other thing is it's, it's everything's muddy. Right, so you're you're sinking. Some of the times when you're waiting for an obstacle, you are literally sinking as you're waiting. So you have yeah. to keep your feet moving. And some of us may have lost our shoes during the process. So um, I, I would say that was the biggest thing was just recognizing that there's somewhere you figure out you literally can't progress unless you reach your hand up for somebody else. Yeah. Oh, unless you're like Jared Durden on that one. There was the there was the platform that kind of boarded up towards up above it kind of slanted against you slanted towards you yeah and we all needed help for that but jared just leapt up and like he's <laughs> like like you're the freaking spider-man or yeah, something you climbed up the wall and got yourself over no problem called? that was the i don't know 
inverted. It was like an inverted slant or something against you. But that it, there are several events like you literally cannot get up. And by the way, I was at the top of a few of those slopes trying to help people up. I think I was trying to help you up mm-hmm. at the top of a muddy ridge, but we were both so slippery. Yeah, I couldn't even hold. grab you. And right. so I'm just holding your hand, really, while you're doing it, it on your really own. It was really nice moral, I struggled. Moral, <laughs> I'll say that. Moral, <laughs> more moral support than actual support. Yeah. So, Piper, what was your favorite obstacle? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> so Blaine isn't here to defend himself. <laughs> <laughs> so let's go get him. Yeah. Um, I think my favorite one, I don't know the official title, but I like to refer to it as the Tickle Monster because I could not get control of myself the entire time we were doing it. Um, but this is the one where we were climbing like the V-shaped metal ladder and I was trying to ignore Crocker because he was yelling to the crowd, <laughs> she has her PhD, everybody, she has her PhD. And I, so I was trying to like maintain my composure and just climb this ladder and ignore Crocker. Yeah, that's right, yeah. So we get to the other side, and this is the one where there's the inflatable blow up that you have to la- wrap your legs oh, around. Oh, that's the tickle monster, yeah. Yeah, that had the pinkish, kind of reddish water. Um, so I'm in, it's like a two-person thing. So I'm in front, and Blaine is behind me, and we get like, I don't know, five inches forward. (laughs) And we both tip over to the side and I just immediately can't get control of myself. I just (laughs) cannot stop laughing. I can't like use my arms all of a sudden. And I'm sure Blaine is behind me like, get it together, Piper. And he's like using the rope to kind of propel us forward. But that was probably my favorite one simply because it tickled me so much and I just (laughs) lost control of my body. Now, uh, Kaylin has done the hard work of looking up a bunch of our pictures that the event took of us and you found six or seven but uh she did get a picture of jared and i on the inflatable tickle monster ourselves and it is not flattering you can see both of us holding on for dear life both of us our guts in the daylight sun yeah uh, and just uh, holding on with hope alone really keeping us afloat yeah we just finished with like both of our left ankles on the inflatable (laughs) and that's it (laughs) At a certain point, you just swim across or yeah. walk across. That would have been better. Mm-hmm. If I'm totally honest, I could touch the bottom with my feet the whole time. <laughs> okay. Why did you have so much trouble? <laughs> because it, you were in the front, and it was there. I was trying to. As you pull, it's like you're leaning backwards. You want to take responsibility? You just want to shift it on me? Is that what's going on here? That's not what Tough Mudder is about. Pretty much. Okay. Well, <laughs> that's what this podcast is about. That's I guess exactly that's what, what this podcast <laughs> is about. Uh, so uh, Danielle, what do I skip, Kalen? Yeah. Kaylin, what was your favorite obstacle? Ooh, my favorite obstacle would probably be the mud mile. Um, that's basically, I don't know, like five or so, like you climb up a muddy thing and then you fall like into the muddy water. Creamy mud, I've decided that there's two distinguishing types of mud. There's creamy mud and there's watery mud. Uh-huh. So this was more of the creamy mud. But you basically do that five or so times. By, by the end of a tough mudder, you do have categories of mud. Yeah, by exactly. the end of it. You're like, okay, I can were... do that mud. Yeah. There was right. the... There's like the ice skating mud, mud that you can like skid There's through. There's areas yes, we that were like frosting. Yeah. What? It was like frosting, like it had that consistency. Mm-hmm. You didn't know? Am I, am I uh, crazy? I don't know. I feel like you might be crazy. I'm okay. not sure yeah. about the frosting <laughs> mud, but. That mud mile, though, that's a great that way of was... like destroying your thighs before. I mean, it's like the first beginning. It just destroys your thighs. Oh. You can't find any. You can't. You're spending all your core strength keeping yourself upright, like you're a baby deer learning to walk. And then by the time you're done with it, oh wait, there's like 17 more events for us to do. Well, actually, I think you're talking about the wrong one. So the mud mile is the one like where you're going up and down. Like oh, I was talking mud. about okay, the you're first about the literal run. Mud, the first which, mile. That one was awful. That was definitely not yeah. my favorite. That was the worst part. Um, definitely the one like where you're swimming in mud to get up the other side, and that's where the teamwork comes in. Where yeah, each like pulling each other. That's where John and I had a very special moment together. But yeah. we couldn't. I mean, I couldn't get anybody up, and unless it was an event where my hands were somewhat dry, I couldn't help anybody. Yeah. Danielle. Yes. From the beginning, you were uh, kind of. Uh, I think, and, and we were both characterized this way of, oh, we got a, we got this drive. We want to kind of win. What's your advice? How do we win? Next year, I think like, we need to add some stronger teammates. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> no, <laughs> I'm kidding. No, I I think that it was a, a lot. Uh, I did not expect it. the 
the way it went. Um, the mud was every single step of the way, and that was hard. Like that was as hard. a runner, like I don't know if, the, if your calves hurt for two days, but my calves hurt for two days afterwards. And um, so I, I think that we need to practice with. I, I'm not sure what we can do to get better at that running part, but yeah. um, I think we will know how to do the obstacles because we can work together. But the running between, we need to improve. So. Okay. Is there somewhere on campus or one of the centers we could just really wet it down and maybe like the PMC. Some sand. <laughs> well, we have a stream right next to us. That's, That's true. And when it's not flooding, which it probably is right well, this now. this is the perfect time to practice. It. <laughs> I guess so. Right. But the, yeah, just run like through the base of the stream is probably gross enough and slippery enough. Yeah. Not to mention, I, I agree with Daniel's point. We need a little bit more. <laughs> like I've had a couple people talk to me this week about uh, they've been following the pictures. They talked to a couple of us. They were like, I think I want to do it next year. And now it kind of almost on Danielle's mind. Like, can I see you do a couple pull-ups first before I let you on the team? <laughs> <laughs> there, there's going to be a test. It's going to be 30 minutes long. You have to do all this strength training. That's right, running. yeah. Carry sandbags. Kind of like yes. what they do with firemen, right? Yeah. Right. <laughs> we see. have to have a training session. <laughs> So, Robert, what would you tell someone to convince them to try a Tough mutter if they weren't wanting to? Yeah, it's a, it's a ton of fun. Um, I would definitely describe it as an obstacle course that just really spans the distance of 5K or 10K or 15, what, whichever you select. My biggest concern was actually the 5K running portion. I knew it was going to be muddy, but I was pretty concerned because I know we've got some pretty competitive people on this team, and I'm like, there's no way I'm going to be able to keep up. <laughs> and so I actually was working on trying to improve my endurance. And one thing I would say is that was the least concern at the end of it. The running was definitely uh, not the hardest part. And I'm going to counter Kaylin. The mud mile killed me. <laughs> I was helping people up and over those humps. I helped about two or three people up and over for each time that I went up and over. And by the time I got to the end of that, <laughs> I was just sucking wind. So that was that was definitely tough for me. And let's not bury the lead here, Robert. As for a guy that was a little concerned about the running, where did you finish among he the group? Cheated, he where, cheated. Where did he finish? Well, I'm sorry, Danielle. Wasn't a time the to the bet, question was for Robert. Since we are. <laughs> quite a competitive group and might I say an extraordinary group of athletes um, I did come in first um, and I had Mr. Crocker here yeah right by my if, side if second. you'll notice in the picture Didn't so this was the, the we're, we, we've got the picture up and this is the one that's on the podcast of all of us in a line arm in arm and this was the last event and I want to note that right after this moment you cro you run to the finish line and Robert Hold me back. <laughs> I felt him pull back and kind of toss me backwards. I might have tossed, but with the uh, with the effort, and then took off. And I, I really did. I, I was I was and kind pushed of, me uh, over I in the process. The I was impressed. From anyone that helped us along the way, Mr. Tucker and I appreciate that help. We do, yeah. So we we have our our, our final competitor join us, uh, Blaine Radford. Uh, introduce yourself, sir, and, and tell us about what you do at the college. Yeah, so Robert started out uh, well by um, describing extraordinary athletes. So, yeah. So I'm the college director of project management, so primarily managing construction projects for the college. And what possessed you to, because you were kind of the godfather of this event. The seed was planted by a couple of us others, but mm -hmm. you were the one that kind of rallied everybody to join. What, what possessed you? Don't you like us? Why did you do this to us? <laughs> yes. Yeah, um, you're testing my memory here. So it was that great gathering of the minds, you know, at the MCCA conference, right? So um, where all great ideas come from, generally, and I respond. <laughs> sure. We, uh, somebody threw out the idea, and I think uh, we just ran with it. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm always looking to put together teams, team building opportunities. It's always fun. This seemed to fit. Check all the boxes. Yeah, because uh, the way Robert described it, because it, it is a physical event, but it's very social. I mean, I was laughing yep. pretty much from the get go. Uh, I mean, it was really, it was a really fun experience. Have you I mean, told the story about the the best laugh of the day? No. What was? The, you know, we'll have <laughs> to. No, no, we'll no, have no, to. We actually have it. <laughs> no, I haven't yet. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay. Grand finale. 
time. <laughs> We're going to save that one? <laughs> yes, we are. Uh, that might have to be, uh, oh, that's cool after dark. We're after night before. <laughs> <laughs> there was an extra event that none of us were prepared for. <laughs> Actually, there was an event that uh, at the very beginning that only I did when my car got stuck. <laughs> and you had to sit behind the wheel while I pushed my car. My car, I pushed it. I want to say, though, this is something that, that uh, I admire. Because there was not a moment of hesitation. I could tell <laughs> that as soon as it happened, Andrew went, all right, this is reality, and this is how we're going to fix it. And just went straight into, on his knees, in the mud, pushing the car. It was like, jump in the, jump in the driver's seat. And, and we got out immediately. Boy, that Some was, people would have just panicked, and that would have been the end of the day. I, to be fair, I was panicking. I'd kept it, I'd kept it in my heart and soul, though. My body was just trying to exert that into positive energy and get the car moving. I'm actually surprised I got it moving. Maybe it was like the adrenaline, like the mother that put, lifts the car I, off I the car. I did have one foot out. I helped. <laughs> you did get a foot out. That's yeah, right. Yeah. It was two and a half people pushing. I keep forgetting how long you are. Pushing. Yeah. So uh, let's try to go through the event, see if you jump in here and see if you can remember or describe the event. The first one, so there were 30. The first one we hit, or obstacle, I should say, the first one we hit was called Quagmire. Which one, which one was Quagmire? Do you remember that, Kaylin? Um, yeah, so I think that is just kind of where we were going down the hills into like those small water ponds and then like going back up and like doing a little bit more before we got to the, um, oh, the uh, carrying the sandbags. Yeah. Those couple. So that whole thing was the quagmire? Not the like run part. Oh, like no, where that you was... ran. Like that was just like nothing. Right. Gotcha. Like, that's not classified. So then we hit speak for yourself. We hit failed. Yeah. That wasn't nothing. <laughs> <laughs> that was the worst part. <laughs> Definitely the worst part. And then after that was the bail bonds. The bail bonds. Um, Who actually climbed over both sets of hay bales? So I, I actually did. know that that was part of it. I will <laughs> mention I this. <laughs> for those of us that end up doing the 10K or whatever next time around, those hay bales are a lot more uh, a lot more elaborate next time because they are like stacked five or six to the sky. Yeah. And you have to climb up and come down. Whereas this one kind of had, I don't know what happened. Did they they take, had a path in the they middle. Had a, they, had yeah. a, they had a ridge that you could just run through. and that, Yeah. So some of us chose to go ahead and climb over the hay bale rather than cut yeah. through the... Yeah. Was that just I, I you? Because I don't know that anybody else climbed over... That, that's I did. exclusively Blaine. I, <laughs> yeah. Exclusively Blaine. Never. Maybe so John, too. I could see John times. doing it. So sack up, that was where we were carrying the... Sandbags. The sandbags, yeah. right? And that was, what, 50 pounds? Oh. Felt like a feed sack. I would, uh, I would grade it out... <laughs> <laughs> I would grade it out as one seven-year-old is what I would because yeah. it felt like I was carrying my kid if she was being cooperative for once and just hanging out, not fighting, and not swinging, yeah, and kicking. Okay, okay. Then the mud mile, which 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 we brought up, um, which was you actually skipped Berlin walls. Oh, I did skip. Which one was Berlin wall? That was where you just like jump. Up, well, you you, have you to know go over the wall. The wall. Oh, that was that the was normal the first one. We really had to work together on. Yes. Yeah. 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 That, yeah was, that was the first wall. Yeah. That was a really tough one too because you you try to just pull yourself up and the top of it like you just slide right off. It like get your arm over the top and we were yeah. I almost got thrown over that one. That I almost one. face planted into it as I was getting ready. I was rubbing I was revving up. I my my feet were revving up and I was getting ready to run into it because I had a couple of you guys with your hands out ready to lift me and boost me. And as I go, I think John puts his hand into the small of my back and I just about <laughs> bite it. <laughs> I was like, this mutter is tough enough. <laughs> I don't need sabotage tough mutter. So then the mud mile, that was the one that you brought up. Yes, that was my fave. And that well, that was my favorite, too. That was really fun. It and, was. And weird. And creepy and gross. Yeah. All of this. And that was the creamy mud one. It it was gnarly. It was. It was kind of like uh, the color of, like, a latte. You told, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And yeah. everybody, it was cool to watch, like, you kind of look over, and on each mound, you see people completely covered in the stuff, like, pulling other people up. Yeah. I was actually thinking about, the, I thought of the interior of a donut, like the, the cream filling, the chocolate custard cream, is what I thought when we were running through the entire time, which they must ship that in. They must ship in their own mud. They must. I don't think so. You think that's just? You think that's already in the soil? They bring it out somehow. I think they <laughs> got to add water. No. <laughs> <laughs> and I think you called too how they were adding the water because you remember we went by that pond and there was just a tube coming out of it and a pump. Just pump it out. So it's I want to point out the, the mud did not taste like the center of a donut. It did not. Or no. a latte. It didn't. Just to be clear. 
And I thought it was sick for a couple days because I had ingested so much crap just floating through the air as I was doing multiple things. I had a scratchy throat for a couple days. I was wondering, I was like, did I get COVID from Tough Mudder? How is that possible? I appreciate, though, that in your mind, it was more realistic that they brought in donut <laughs> filling. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a magical place. <laughs> what was Kiss of Mud? Because everything that was, was a kiss the, of mud. Oh, Robert, he got the kiss of mud. That was the one like oh, where you're crawling no through. Yeah. Yeah. Robert, Robert like literally the kissed wire. the mud. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah, kind of got some whoops under the barbed wire as well. And I went face first into the puddle. Yeah. And apparently it would have been a good idea to close my eyes, but I didn't think to do that. So <laughs> the mud went straight into my eyes. And by the time I finished, I couldn't really see much there. They did clear up by the end of the race, though. I was at, that was the event for me and for Kay and a couple others, because the smaller you are, the easier it yes. is for you to get. How is that for you, Rob? Because you're a little bit of a bigger guy like Jared and a couple others. I had a great time. Yeah. yeah. Was that difficult for you to... Wire or anything. Oh, you didn't get snagged? Mm-mm. Anybody get snagged? I don't think we had a snag. Uh, that person would have complained uh, about it the entire way, I feel. Yeah, my headband got stuck and fell off. <laughs> Other than that, it was fine. <laughs> I, I just bear crawled. I didn't even, like, I noticed a lot of people were, like, pulling themselves on their You stayed belly. remarkably clean. I, Him I, and Jonathan both stayed remark. I don't know what went wrong. I went wide on elbows and knees. and That means you have a real strong core. Because uh, it's like I, if you I build, think that picture of us might <laughs> yeah. might disagree. <laughs> that picture of us on the tickle monster, right? Yeah. <laughs> t- Remember that picture of us on the tickle monster? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Blaine's just cast He's away. It was called. called it. <laughs> <laughs> it was called what's yeah. that? It was called Castaway. No, it was called the tickle monster. <laughs> just, That's its I'm name. To rename it. <laughs> so pitfall. What was pitfall? Who remembers pitfall? Pitfall. We're all pitfalls. We're all pitfalls. <laughs> right. There All were nine some of us crazy ones where we had to go down like huge tribunes on on a rope, basically. Yeah. but I don't think those I don't think listed. those were events. I just think yeah, they turned they made the stream part of the event. What would pit? So it was after. Was that the rotating? Through. I feel like that was the one right before the pond. There was a mud like we pit that, that had holes in it that you could. Oh, yeah. oh that's yeah. right. That's yeah, yeah, that yeah, yeah. 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 That must have been it because that was right after the kiss of mud. It goes there were from several lights. layers that you had to climb over, but yeah, you were either a foot deep or up to your neck, and you right. had no idea what it was going to be. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's right. right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because a couple of them, and Piper and I were next to it, next to each other during this, mm-hmm. and they all of them were at least belly button. I mean, it, and it was cold. Mm-hmm. It was cold. But the last <laughs> one, cold. the last one, hits you. The last one's like right above your shoulders. I mean, I, I don't know how you got through it. Did you? Were you able but, to touch? I. <laughs> Thanks. Maybe she blacked out at that point. I'm talking to Kay, who's uh, famously short. <laughs> Were you able to touch at that point? You see, I feel like I was. Yeah. There's only one where I almost drowned, but okay. you know, it wasn't that one. Okay. <laughs> Just walked over her teammates. And tramp. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Gained height. Funky monkey. We didn't do. Um, oh no, that's not a 5K. Everest. I got gotcha, you. So we got to jump. I see it's the green. Gotcha. Yes. What was Everest? Everest. I thought Everest was the second to last one, the tallest one. Yeah, I think that's right. Yeah, the cargo net climb. Um, yes. That was the Mutterhorn. Oh, okay. Okay. Everest. Never mind. So it was before Everest the cool block the spinning oh, that one. That's, 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 that's the one. That's the one. Yeah. Yeah. So that was Everest, and so it was a tilted back at. I think they said like 10 degree angle. Uh, Piper and I almost did an extra event because we were a bit oh. behind the rest of you. And so we almost ran up the slope. There was the, the ramp, the half pipe that we almost ran up the side, uh, which would have uh, been, I almost wish we had done it just so that we could it have. brutal. Yeah. People were smacking their faces. They were, yeah. And so I was like, this is going to be it. I'm going to be able to tell everybody what happened to her nose when we catch up with them. Did you get that black eye? <laughs> uh, but uh, that was only because we were ways behind. And it's kind of weird how the, the pads, they did fork, but it it wasn't like an obvious forking, so we almost got we got kind of turned around a little bit. We uh, missed the left hand turn at the open gate in the wooded area. <laughs> it was very strange. Turn. We're, our, we but, but naturally, being tough mutter, we were like, okay, that's the most miserable thing in front of us. That must be what we're doing next. <laughs> and then there was like a gate with like green grass for half a mile. We were <laughs> that was the direction we were supposed to go. I'm excited about the idea of doing the 10K next year because some of these ones we missed have some of the best names. Some of which we, we probably shouldn't say on the podcast. Okay. <laughs> well, you know, by the end of it, we'll have alternative names for half of them. So Block Nest Monster, that was that really cool one. Who, who wants to describe that? That's the one where I almost drowned. Pretty you sure. almost drowned it on that one? So. Drowned? Drowned? Yeah. That was the rotating, there's a gigantic white 
what would you call it? And it rotated. Uh, and the people on the other side of it had to grab the ridge and pull it, while the people on your side of it had to lift it up, and then you kind of got carried over by it. But that required a ton of teamwork, yeah. and it required a little dexterity, too, because once you're on top and it's rotating, you have to kind of do the uh, the uh, sliding across the hood of the, the <laughs> like Duke's Duke's hazard, yeah. yeah, and swing around and grab it as you come back down. That's right. Yeah, this is one. Do you remember... As it's rotating, you have to kind of take the opportunity to grab mm-hmm. as it's going over, and it carries you over. Do you remember I grabbed the top at one point as it's rotating, and you were on the other side? Mm-hmm. And we made eye contact at one point because it started to tilt back. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I felt really like... Yeah, like maybe, it was rotating, maybe it was rotating onto me, and it was just a natural self-defense. I was like, not just, today, son. Not today. <laughs> he was pushing it back. That's what you didn't That's know. Right. <laughs> we made eye contact, and he had this little grin on his face. I wasn't sure what that was. <laughs> it sounds very mischievous that I had a little grin on my face. <laughs> and then... The Arctic <clears throat> Enema. Oh, that was Ooh. that was definitely that my was favorite. brutal. Anybody want to tell us about that one? <laughs> yeah, so you, you you climb to the top of a large uh, plastic slide. What it's about thirty feet wide. So there's like ten people going at a time, simultaneously. Si- yeah, simultaneously, and not really waiting. Not really waiting for people to get out of the way. No, either. no, you you intentionally slide feet first onto the person in front of you, <laughs> and you slide into an ice bath, which you are then forced to. Dunk, dunk your head under to uh, actually get under an inflatable tube. So you, you actually have to submerge yourself into the ice bath. But I know there was a little bit of complaining and you heard a whole lot of, oh my gosh, and various other expletives sometimes. But that was definitely my favorite because it was a great, oh, uh, nice, cool amazing. dip while we're out there just sweating and yeah. being miserable. Cleaned your clothes a little bit too. It did. It did. It was one of the cleanest obstacles. And it had in the middle of the pool that you slid into an inflatable Right. To force you to go under it, but you could just as easily lift it over you. So I was able to avoid of tough mutter. You just got to go for it. I, I was able to avoid fully submerging myself. Yeah. So you didn't you didn't actually finish the obstacle. No, I didn't. I did. I did an adequate mutter. I did an adequate mutter immediately. You're not tough, Crocker. I mean, yeah, no, I'm not. But that's Your time I, is still running, basically. <laughs> I know. <laughs> if I had Danielle's watch Six on me right Six days, now. <laughs> 12 hours. <laughs> but that's not a bad idea. What if you designed an event called a Tough Crocker? A Tough Crocker? There'd be all kinds of cheats Short to cuts. it. And, yeah. <laughs> it would just be, you kind of have to talk about politics. Too. Yes, that's right. There would be uh, how many stairs. flights of beer after every, <laughs> after every event. So the castaway... The castaway. That's the tickle monster. That's the that's tickle the monster, tickle monster mm-hmm. which is a better name, obviously. <laughs> Who felt like they had the most trouble on the castaway? Just based on the pictures we saw. <laughs> or does anybody want to throw anybody else under the castaway? Blaine, how'd you hold together on the castaway? We always, I we heard that you had to do a lot more work than you should have. No, it was. Piper and I, I thought, did, did a great job on that one. I um, thought you were so annoyed with me because I could not stop laughing. <laughs> I was like, he's pulling all the way back there because I can't get We made control. it three quarters of the way before falling off. I felt like that was better than the average. Oh, yeah. Um, uh, better than, um, I think, uh, Kaylin and Danielle. <laughs> I think we made it 67% of the way. Yeah. I'll, I'll agree with that, yeah. <laughs> How does that affect your time? Do you take penalties if you... No. Don't complete. No. Uh, did somebody have to go Automatic with the last place? Did somebody have to go with a random on that one? Because uh, we have an odd no, number. I, so yeah, obviously we had an odd number of people. So I went by myself, and I can't tell if that was a help or a hindrance. <laughs> right. <laughs> I think it'd have to be a hindrance. The thing would kick up on you, right? The yeah. inflatable would kick up on you. you can't send them all away. So I don't know, but it was getting away from me towards the end for sure. Yeah. Now, I've seen different t- different tough mutters have different events, and I've seen other tough mutters online of just the wire, and you kind of have to grab the rope and kind of crawl across just clean to the rope the whole way which uh, and by the way what i'd seen dipped so badly uh means that like half of people are getting their backs soaked as they're trying to get across the water and stuff that looked like a lot of fun i was i, I, I haven't done it yet but i, I expected more monkey bars there were no monkey bars in the ones that we did 
I think that's the 10K. I'll probably provide more yeah. of that. Maybe. Oh, I'll that's tell you what that. Funky monkey was. I'll tell you that we run into right the problem that John and I had though is that if you have no traction, you can't hold on to anything. And so I had done them once, and I collapsed on the first bar because I just couldn't hold on. One second. Could we create our own tough mutter? At Richwood Valley, <laughs> could we, we put talked in a, about that earlier? Or Lebanon? Maybe we need to put in an innovation grant for to create a tough mutter event. What? Students, welcome to students. Yeah. Staff, fundraiser of some type. You guys are the construction people. Get John and Blaine on it. Foundation, tough mutter. So I went, I went right. to, I went to FIU in Miami, and they they had a beautiful campus. And you guys know uh, American Ninja, Ninja yeah. American Ninja Warrior, right? So they filmed on our campus, and like the part, the horseshoe that they used was right outside my office, and I thought it was hilarious that I put together a tape where I, I put my tie on my head like a headband, and I had just seen that episode of The Office, I think it was, where I started rolling across the desk and yelling parkour, yeah. <laughs> and then I, sh- I, sh- I just showed the video to someone and tried to use that to get onto the show, and I did not. <laughs> successfully get on the show so this would be an opportunity i think for us to really kind of relive we, we could do a tough mutter slash american ninja warrior yeah the tough eagle the tough the eagle tough eagle Aussies, tough eagle. well done that's nice good mutter horn that was the yep that was the tall, tall that was the walk oh, us okay. through the mutter horn oh uh well, that was a lot of fun. Obviously, it was more teamwork at the beginning, helping people get up on there. But I don't know. I don't know how high do you guys think that was? It's like I felt like we climbed three stories. Yeah. Yeah. About 30, 30 feet or so. Yeah. yeah. So zero. not good for the, the height averse, but I enjoy that. Uh, that might have been my favorite. Uh, but but uh, a nice view of everything. A lot of people just kind of like freezing up up there and everything. <laughs> that, heights, but it was fun. That was by far my favorite. Uh, help moment where I'm helping somebody because I was at the top of the board. I got up first and uh, I was helping. I think just about every one of you I helped up that. My favorite though, I think at the end, one of the last people I helped was Piper, who when I was helping her up had so much trouble uh, I think her upper body was spent at that point, and she was completely horizontal on the board. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you're supposed to do it, right? You're supposed to go horizontal. I, pretty much everybody <laughs> just went straight up, but she uh, held my arms, did not lift at all with her upper body, and just started walking up the side with her legs until she was completely sideways. And now we're just we kind of both halfway. We're in no man's land, and I well, here we go. <laughs> oh man. That was great. A uh, so far a near decade of uh, of child rearing has prepared me for that moment because <laughs> that was uh, that was a fantastic lift. And then of course we ended with electroshock therapy, mm-hmm. which I started out by complimenting you, Andrew. So I want you to take this with a grain of salt. But my memory of electroshock therapy was hearing you at the end of the line yelling, ow, ow, <laughs> every time, really pronouncing that W. It did not sound like you were having fun. It didn't. I felt, it made me feel better to yell, though. I, yeah. Uh, but I, it was involuntary. I, I had no choice over that. And I felt really bad. because. And by the way, in one of the pictures, not the one that we're looking at right now, in one of the pictures that Caleb was able to, to find off the website you do see me locked arms with piper and you do see me screaming out was i the loudest out you could hear me oh yeah oh yes you <laughs> I was right definitely. next to you we if need you to- can if you look at the picture i am leaning way forward because i'm sick of you yelling in my ear at this point. <laughs> <laughs> like come on andrew we're going for the finish line <laughs> all right i think this means though um, unless there was more of the about, of the about the event that you want to trot out i do think we need to hand out some unofficial awards here but we can Absolutely. we can oh, only boy. we can only award them collectively though we can only award them collectively so let's start with the obvious one this is the mvp of tough mutter the toughest mutter who is the toughest mutter in the room do we think who jumps to mind uh, i say blaine i, say oh, I was going to say danielle <laughs> i was going to also say danielle yeah, I think she kept us going, right? Like, she kind of led the pact. She kept us, like, on time. On reminding task. us what to yes, the time reminding, was. Yes, reminding, like, hey, we're she still timing here, so we need to keep going. Slinging insults to make sure that we kept yeah. moving. Yeah, she started <laughs> playing tag with us to make us, That's like, right. go That's faster. Right. That, was, that was Blaine's idea. I did come up with tag. Yeah. <laughs> okay, sorry, I'll take <laughs> that away. reward for the best idea of the day. <laughs> <laughs> Was a, I think you had come up to me and you're like, after this was after the uh, army crawl, whatever we're calling it, and uh, you were like, come on, we're playing tag. And uh, I think you tagged me and ran off. 
And I was like, well, I'm probably not catching him, but John doesn't know we're playing. So I came and got John and got out of there. We also haven't talked about how Blaine did most of the event barefoot. Oh, oh that's cool. right. Yeah. Were you our first intensity. shoe lost or only shoe lost? <laughs> only. I believe so. Mm. That's a rough choice so the shoes wouldn't be lost. Yeah, I had to carry them. Otherwise, they would have been gone for good because they were not staying on my feet. Yeah. That right, uh, right there, why you should have worn like mowing shoes or something that like you could cast into the fire and be fine with. Yeah, they were old shoes that I didn't care if they were destroyed, but um, I went, you know, you need your shoes very tight to stay on. So when I went to tighten them up, they were just, uh, the, the laces were literally breaking. They're a little bit too far gone, I think. So we had to improvise, carry them through some events because every now and then you would get to gravel and rocks mm -hmm. and barefoot was a challenge. So, so. We'll That's give what Daniel makes him we'll, the, the toughest. We'll, we'll make Danielle the toughest mutter, and we'll make Blaine the toughest footer. <laughs> that, that works. <laughs> okay. So are we awarding it on the basis of uh, mudding, or are you awarding it, Kaylin, on the basis of being a good cheerleader? Because that was, okay, that was the other, that was the other uh, category that I had, best teammate. Best teammate. Acknowledging that all nine of us were all amazing teammates. We're all beautiful snowflakes, all of us unique in our own way. Best teammate. Piper. Piper, why is that? She was just happy the whole time and excited, and she made everybody else have a good time. I did not ever see her not smiling. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why that event tickled me so much. I think, like, we've been through the pandemic, and I hadn't had an adventure in a long time, mm -hmm. yeah. so I was just really happy. I, I had spent the weekend with my parents, so I left... Um, Saturday morning from my parents' lake house, went to the event and came back. And we were having breakfast um, Sunday morning, and my mom was like, every time you talk about that, you can't stop smiling. And I was like, that's so true. So thank you for saying that, and I'm smiling right now talking yeah. about it. I just, I had such a wonderful time. Because usually when a bunch of us as coworkers are getting together, it's a very controlled environment. And it reminds me of, you ever watch that YouTube series, Hot Ones? And but the, they use the extremely... They eat the hot wings and then and answer it, questions. And it bumps them off their game some. Yeah. And it like allows you not necessarily to become less professional or anything, but to become like a <laughs> when you're getting shocked, you become a very true version of yourself. And allows, I don't know, just a different way to mix personalities together, I think, in a way that was a lot of fun for me. I, just the way Robert uh, described it earlier made a lot of sense to me. Like it is a, a 5 or 10K barely it's mostly kind of squirreling around in the mud together uh under the pretenses of we got to go get it is that how you feel robert am yeah. i paraphrasing yeah, you absolutely accurately? i think that that describes it well i mean that some of the obstacles were definitely challenging right like physically challenging um and they definitely require teamwork like jonathan mentioned earlier you cannot do some of these alone but it's definitely just a, a fun team building type event yeah well. it's a, it is kind of a, a team building a team building i'm at to say exercise <coughs> on steroids because right. you don't really have a choice and you, you there's you're not really allowed to even be shy the shy just can't work and yeah, you do kind of get in each other's personal space a little bit yeah there's no choice other, of that either yeah. whether you want to or not i mean the second you end up in like a a, a, a like between the mud slopes mm -hmm. the second you end up in one of that i mean you're, it's very likely you are colliding at least with somebody yeah just kind of don't care at that point because it's you're trying to get over that obstacle um biggest casualty injury maybe property lost really at this point we just headband is lost do we have a do we have a casualty i have some pretty sweet bruises yeah <laughs> sweet Does help anyone else how help Oh, yeah. oh. we have Tell right now. Oh, that's for bad. Those we have us, our winner. For those of us listening. <laughs> Jonathan, what happened? John, John has happened? flexed his bicep, <laughs> and under his bicep <laughs> is a, I'm going to say, fist-sized purple bruise. What's going on there? I think that was from the, not the first obstacle, the one where, I think it was the Berlin Wall. Mm -hmm. So you had to, you couldn't oh. climb up with the grip of your hand because your hand's too slick, so you have to get one bicep up. And I think I just hit that too hard to pull myself up, and I think that's what happened. So, yeah, I didn't notice it at the time, luckily. And, of course, it was, like, one of the first events. And it was – I re recall it being all scraped up at the time. But, mm -hmm. yeah, it, it hurt a little bit after after a while. It, it could also be, if you notice the picture, that could have been Blaine. <laughs> <laughs> Got a pretty good grip on you there. He was, uh, yeah, he was holding on for dear life. You'll notice, I think he's the only one with both 
hands locked together yeah. in that picture. <laughs> Which is probably the smart way of doing it. Notice, by the way, and I clown on him in the chat for this, but Rob is absolutely trying to nope out of this event. <laughs> <laughs> he is being saved only by Kaylin's determination and Danielle really just needing him to steady her <laughs> before she falls. <laughs> He's the only one who is turned and looking to, for, the, for the exit as soon as possible. <laughs> Yep, they kept me in line. <laughs> uh, oh, um, so aside from biggest casualty, uh, I had another event I wanted to pick. Um, how about worst event, worst obstacle? I'll just go around the room. Oh, definitely the electroshock. That was my least favorite, yeah. I don't know. I wasn't a fan of the ice bath. You drop down and automatically you, ha- you're, you are struggling to breathe. That yes. shock to your system. Your face didn't look like you were a fan when you came up out of the water. <laughs> yeah. Luckily, there's a, if you remember, guys, there's a, like a, a netted rope afterwards, which was, I was super grateful for because you could grab it and start pulling yourself out instantly. Yeah. Because trying to get up that mud would have been difficult because it was a deep pool of water. I, so, I'm yeah. impressed you could move your limbs. I had trouble moving my limbs. I was so cold. Right. It's like my body seized up and I'm just kind of like a, almost like a gingerbread man walking across the, the <laughs> bottom of the. <laughs> Ice bath. I couldn't breathe yeah. for a few seconds. Yeah, it was it was tough. I think the inverted wall was the one that was the most humbling. How tall do you think that wall was? <sighs> Eight feet? Ten, no, ten feet. I would say at least ten, ten feet. Because I yeah yeah. Can you dunk a basketball? I don't know. You you jumped and you grabbed the top of that and pulled yourself over. You don't think you could dunk a basketball? I don't know. All right. I like to think I could do anything if I try hard enough. Sure. The other end of the height spectrum, Kaylin, would you like to be next? Yes, I would be. I also, the ice bath was absolutely the worst. Now, you did the ice bath with me. I did. We essentially did linked arms. That. We did, yes. And we were like, misery loves company. That exactly. was not true. No. The misery, misery was, was somehow worse. That <laughs> yeah. That one was my least favorite. I would say that, down. or I, I'm going to steal the inverted wall from Piper, because there's just, you can't do it. There's no way to do it. See, I like that one better than the uh, straight wall, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. No, okay. Ice bath. Okay. Ooh, Crocker, what? I, I think oh. I'm going to steal the inverted wall. Okay, yeah. got it. Uh, I've got to say ice bath. It, it, it was nice, at, like, after it was done, I was cooled off, helped the muscles a little bit. But it's the same way with like you were talking about hot ones. I, I hate spicy food. It's it's that same reaction where I just immediately I was just angry for no yeah, reason yeah. in that moment. Right? Like the change was just too fast yeah. and I couldn't help it. And I was just like, and it, it wasn't like yelling in pain or anything. It was just like, I was a grumpy kid, you know? And then once it was over, I was fine and we went on. But Worst event, Blaine. So I'm going to go with just the hay bales. Um, because they're the most boring event, mm-hmm. just like mm-hmm. come and on, itchy. You guys, you guys can do better than this. Yeah, we need we need a bigger challenge. Yeah, I agree. And I, I normally, like I said, normally they have a, a mini mountain of them, and that's kind of a lot of fun. But that wasn't the case this time. I would say electroshock because I could have won, but then my system was like shocked by it. So then Robert pushes me over, and I, I would have won. Where were you getting? Where were you getting shocked? All over or in specific spots? I'd say like more my head. Yeah. As you can see, you were getting pummeled in yeah, that picture. Yeah. So my brain wasn't like comprehending that this is the end. I need to push myself until I got pushed over. <laughs> you might not want to lean head first into the shocking boards. <laughs> Thank you, Blaine. Just, just a quick note about the alleged pushing over. For those that can see the photo, I am solid six feet from Daniel, yeah. so I must have extremely long arms or made a, made a kind of a zag right out of the shock therapy to make it to the finish line. Yeah. Maybe knocked a couple people over on your way to pushing her over. Right, yeah. And then says, me. I beat Danielle, I beat Danielle <laughs> at the end. <laughs> Rob, worst event? Worst event, Rob? Yeah, Aside think, from the scurrilous charges? that mud mile. Uh, that's the, the one where you go up and over and help people through yeah, the like four five, foot tall yep, mud, right? Yeah, exactly. that one just, it just got me. But I think... I, I, that was my approach. I took the wrong approach to that one. I probably should like help one person, then and climb then up over instead yeah. of you know using all my energy. I, I still, as I sit in front of you right now, I still have no idea how I completed that because there's nowhere for you to dig your fingers in. Right. You can't help anybody up, even though we're all trying. You can kind of lift up, kind of, but even then you have to submerge your face in the water. How yeah, yeah, on earth go, did we complete that? Chin deep in the mud and, make, and cradle your hands so yeah. they can put their feet in your hands and then kind of heave ho. 
Um, deathbed. When you're on your deathbed and you're asked by somebody to remember, we'll start with Danielle on this one. When you're asked, uh, when you're on your deathbed and you're asked, do you remember a moment from that tough mutter in 2022? What is the moment that will jump to your mind immediately, Danielle? <laughs> I would say better signage um, (laughs) at the event. (laughs) That's what I'd say. All right. The uh, tittering you're hearing into the microphone right now is uh, is, uh, acknowledgement of a moment in which Danielle could have benefited from better signs. We'll say it's a science (laughs) fault. It it definitely is. Deathbed moment. Anybody? Deathbed moment. Jared? Uh, I'm sorry. Ask the question. Deathbed moment. Which sounds like, by the way, a tough mutter <laughs> uh, obstacle. <I> do- <laughs> <laughs> uh, boy, it, yeah, it was looking down that mud mile and just seeing everybody covered head to toe, yeah, smiling, pulling people up like this. It was almost like this Caligula like scene of yeah bodies strewn about. Yeah. For it, for me, it was at the beginning. When we're kind of on our knees and there's just a ton of nervous energy yeah <laughs> that was a lot of fun for me because i that's it's like that that mood if you could capture it in a bottle you could power a city with uh, as much of the nervous energy because we have been talking about it and doing and like signed up for it a couple of these psychos have already signed up for next year's already as they sit at the stable right now speaking of yeah everybody listening to this podcast if you're interested in joining us uh talk to me anybody that you heard on the podcast uh, we are starting up a sign-up sheet, and we can get you that information. Uh, how big of a team? You said you, you, you ran into someone, and they told you they, they were with how many I, people? When I was, uh, Piper and I were uh, slapping bracelets onto each other beforehand, somebody was talking to one of the uh, uh, event personnel, and they had a question. They were like, I'm sorry, uh, we paid for 29 people, and we're all here, and we're wondering how is the cost going to be managed? And uh, I was the 29 people. You could have a team. I mean, there's no limits, really. No li- or start your own team and see us up there next and year. And I think you get discounts if your group is big enough. Kay, can you speak to that? I do. I don't, I don't remember. Really. Blaine, can I defer to you? Yeah. I, I have no idea. All right. I don't Let's know if there's a discount or, or not. But there is a discount if you sign up now. There you go. Sign up now. FY. Wow. Well, uh, I appreciate everybody coming out. Uh, I I We'll definitely have to do another episode with this kind of format. Yeah. Uh, getting as many people as we can at once. Uh, would anybody care to, if uh, you're all at some point, we'd like to have you on individually, but we want to make sure we give everyone the chance. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you've listened to the podcast before, I think one of the most important questions we do ask is who would win in a battle to the death, Gumby versus Mr. Ed? Does anybody have any thoughts on that and just want to take this opportunity? Please feel Robert, free to jump Robert, in. Robert, you seem to have a good mind for battle between the two of those <laughs> fictional characters. Gumby or Mr. Ed? That's right, mm-hmm. yeah. Uh, I've been kicked by a horse. I wouldn't want to be part of that fight. <laughs> experience. Speaking from experience. <laughs> yes, that's right. I, I, I've never been uh, attacked by a clay creature, though, so I can't really compare. That's kind of what the mud mile was. I guess so, yes. Well, if it's between getting kicked by a horse or that, that's a good question. Ooh. Horse? Well, we learned a lot today, Andrew. Yeah. Uh, we, uh, all about the, 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 the uh, uh, many obstacles that take place during the 5K version of the Tough Mudder. Uh, we met uh, a handful of people that we work with uh, that we hope to all speak to again. Uh, uh, I didn't know that. I didn't know that either. Now you do. Thank you so much. (laughs)